Welcome back, my fellow dungeon crawlers, and welcome to part two of Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup with Icon. And this is gonna be part two of the Centaur Archer. Uh, no, Centaur Hunter, pardon me. And we're sitting at the entrance of the lair. On the last episode, we almost died to Sonya because I didn't respect her enough. We're sitting at some really decent weaponry. We're having the Autumn Katana on us. We have a Battle Axe of Freezing. We have a Flail of Holy Wrath. But we're lacking some good armor uh, items. There's not many good options here lying around. We have a scroll of teleportation, a small stack. There's a scroll of ancient armor I don't want to use now. There's some heal wounds, no haste. A few potions of might. That's pretty okay. And since we died almost on the last run, I'm going to be a bit more careful here because the lair features some enemies with a lot of damage. And we have a firewall on this uh, level. But I'm not gonna go into this fireball because I have no resistance of fire at all and that's some circumstance under which you shouldn't enter these vaults because they're potentially really dangerous and should always be only taken with at least one pip of the proper elemental resistance. Better two of them and since I'm lacking that I'm only having cold resistance at my disposal so I'm gonna ignore this vault although it's tempting and always a bit hard to let those uh, chances pass by it's better to not take it so this is a spiny frog and a water moccasin which is a bit scary but we're gonna try how this will work out so we're taking terrible amounts of damage from this frog it's exactly what I expected to happen. Okay, so this shows us that we have to take these frogs very seriously. Very, very seriously. But I've expected that with these uh, AC and evasion ratings that I would get in a lot of beating by these guys. But luckily we're a centaur, which means I'm fast enough to run away from the frogs. Normally you wouldn't be able to run away from these. So there's a first pack of blink frog. So we're gonna step back a few more tiles and keep shooting. Running. So let's kill this guy and just keep shooting. And as soon as something comes up close, we're gonna switch over to the katana and hope for some good swings here. And as soon as they get up to distance, we're going to shoot again. So this is a very ammunition extensive fight, but it's okay, we have a lot of ammunition on us. So that's the power of one blink frog. It costs us almost 30 of our HP. So the vault is closing, but I'm not fond of going for it. Like I explained before, I deem it way too dangerous to risk our streak here. Well, our wannabe streak. We have only one victory in our pocket, but I really want to make two of them out of that. So there goes another unidentified potion. That's degeneration. Let's drop it. Don't need degeneration. Another moccasin, but these I can kill off pretty safely. And there's lightning spire. Mm, I want to memorize that, even though it's going to be pretty hard to uh, get it to a castable level. It's still a very appealing uh, option to take in. Because right now I'm only wearing chainmail, and that's something uh, which makes spellcasting doable at some point. That's the power of one killer B. <laughs> But there's some magnification if I run into a greater pack of these. That's okay. I'm not too afraid of that as long as I have those magnification portions up. There's the first croc. I'm gonna shoot it and kill it from afar. 
that's a stack of two cancellation potions. I'm actually pretty happy to find three of them. They're really versatile uh, potions with many different uses. The first yak pack. Yaks are really fun with the uh, centaur because you can outrun them and just keep killing them from a distance. Right now we're using a terrible lot of uh, arrows to kill one, but that'll change as soon as we can swap into a longbow, which we hopefully find at some point. So there's a spiny frog, hopefully I can soften it up a bit. And this time we didn't get in a single hit from it, which was more lucky than everything else. But I can take some luck from time to time, it's okay. So there's another snake. Let's start shooting from a distance and go into melee. Okay, so looks like we're getting forward decently here. There's a hippogriff. I think I can take this down with my, with my katana. But again, took over 30 damage. We're really uh, squishy with our centaur here. So I have to be very careful when I take uh, fights in melee range. Usually I shouldn't do that. If it's dangerous, I shouldn't do it. Only should take melee fights when it's something uh, pretty harmless, but... Ooh, that's quite a uh, bunch of people. So there goes the first Hydra. We're going at maximum distance here and start shooting. And eventually we'll kill it off in this manner. Yep, there we go. So we don't have any uh, melee weaponry to um, kill a Hydra. But also, we're lacking every, uh, we're lacking a lot of defensive options to take down a Hydra. And there's Erika, so we're not going to take this staircase either because she went invisible. And I don't want to fight an a invisible Erika at this point of the game. So we have a scroll of summoning which went into complete waste, sadly. And there's a centaur pack which will only appear because there's the entrance to the shoals around. And let's see if we can put that scroll of summoning to some use. Okay, looks like we are at least could kill off one uh, centaur with it, which is good. At least this potion did something. Uh, potion scroll, I mean. Because usually the first uh, scroll of summoning ends up being a total waste. Okay, so there's still the centaur pack and I think I'm gonna stick to my katana and just go up close and slaughter them. There's an enchanted short bow, definitely no brand on it. It's either some plus or minus weaponry. So I actually don't think I want to try it out because plus one or two up or down, that's, that won't uh, do much of a difference on a short bow in my opinion. So I think it's not worth Swooping over here. And not even worth trying. So there's only short bows on them. But the plus side is we got a lot of ammunition in. So that's something that I think is very useful. So there's another ring. Let's have a look. It's a ring of visitry. Well, for now, I'm going to keep it because I uh, felt like. Maybe I want to go for Lightning Spire, that would provide a lot of safety for me here. That's why I'm going to keep this Ring of Wizardry for now. So there's a Spine Frog. Let's kill it carefully. And there's a Komodo. Gonna take it from a proper distance here and don't, don't want to go into the lane with this guy. It's way too dangerous and a lot of baddies wrecking up here. So we've got the Porcupine. Let's kite around a bit because I don't want to get up close with this Hydra at any cost. It's six headed. We're having lousy armor class, lousy uh, evasion rating, so rather keep this at a distance here. 
So where's where's this Komodo? I want to kill it. There we go. Okay. So on this fight we had a perfect example why uh, centaurs are counted as one of the easiest races to play in the game because you have such a brutal speed advantage from the scratch which means dying is pretty hard so we're at level 12 now I'm not gonna opt in into more strength I rather want to go into one more point of dex and after that I'm really uh, thinking about um, leveling up intelligence because I feel like some spells on in my pocket could help me a lot for more survival. So let's check out Erica. She has the Venom Bolt, she has a very high chance of confusing and slowing us and yeah it's actually not too much of a good fight so we're gonna put up the uh, Phantom mirror on her, and she went in, and went invisible. That's really very obnoxious. So we're gonna switch over to the autumn katana and finish her off because with a plus eight weapon, you have very decent chances of uh, hitting even an invisible enemy. So there's a scimitar of flaming, and if I didn't find this. Uh, Autumn Katana, I would totally switch into this, but we don't need this at this point. I think the uh, Katana is way stronger, and I don't need a flaming weapon to deal with uh, Hydras, because I got the bow, so we're gonna leave that lying around. But without the Katana, this would be a weapon I would absolutely pick up and stick to. Okay. So there's another bunch of blink frogs alongside with the Komodo. And we're losing some ammo in this situation, but it's okay because right now I'm sitting at a large amount of arrows and I got the feeling that this will be enough until I hit the uh, gifting face from Okawaru, which shouldn't take too long from this point. So there's another ring, which is a ring of slain. That's really nice. It's only plus two, which isn't too good. It's, well, pretty small bonus, but don't say no even to a small slaying bonus. It's pretty good. That's one hit from this Komodo. <laughs> but I felt like it's okay to finish it off in melee. Okay, there's a few yak. Let's check. Okay, so there's a first god gift of 33 arrows, and this will continue like that. So, ammunition is no longer a problem, and that's actually the main idea behind picking Okawaru as a god for a ranged character. So, yeah, it's pretty decent if you're relying on ammunition. But you can also play a ranged character without Okubaru because the dungeon is packed with way than with really enough ammunition to uh, play a ranged character even without the help of a ammunition gifting god. But I felt like doing so because I wanted to have some chances of uh, gifted. Um, Centaur Bardings or something like that, and there's a wave of frost here. Well, I'm a bit tempted to go for this vault because I have the, the cold resistance on this ring, but then on the other hand, it's really dangerous to go for these vaults because, well, I've lost a few characters in vaults like these. So there's another god gift for killing this Hydra. Only arrows again, but that's okay. We also need more arrows. So I'm really not sure if I want to skip or do this vault. So because of that, I'm going to go for uh, a simple and careful strategy. And that will be to stick in my head for a short time 
check the uh, layout of the vault and yeah, it's a ring of magical power. That's something I definitely want to uh, wear here. So let's put up the ring of ice and drop the ring of magical power. I'm not going to need that. And let's have a look at this vault. Let's have a look what's going on down here. So that's a bunch of simulacra. That's okay. I think. Oh, little did I know. So I'm going around these corners trying to shoot it. That was 60 points of damage from one hit of that simulacrum. That's pretty insane. So that's what I'm talking about with the danger of these vaults. So let's kite this back. Bunch of ice beasts and a white imp, not too dangerous. Slowly working forward here, really slowly. Let's pick up the katana for the ice beast. And the plan here is as soon as something too dangerous uh, shows up, I'm going to take flight and let this vault be a vault. So that's the idea behind this situation. But being a centaur also means I have all uh, options of running away here from these guys because it's really hard for them to catch me. But I'm not doing too much damage against these raids. We're slowed now. And I think I'm just gonna put up the heroism, put up the finesse, and start slashing these guys. Okay, so let's check. Uh, okay, no, we're not gonna do this without an, another potion of heal wounds. And hopefully kill these guys and yeah, we've lost two potions of heal wounds for no big gain here and Nah, this won't work. This won't work. I'm gonna leave here. It's too dangerous for my taste to proceed here. So we're gonna skip out on this area. Let's put up the hero and the finesse against this mamba because this thing is really, really dangerous. I'm very vulnerable. I keep dancing on the edge of death here from time to time and I don't like that. I really gotta put up some more safety uh, options before I can take on stuff like these Mambas easily. So, still not too sure how this whole run will end up because right now we're sitting at some troubling equipment. I mean, I don't have a helmet, I don't have a amulet yet. That's some AC. I'm missing out here. So there's a bunch of blink rock and a croc. That's well, not too dangerous actually. Let's step back and start shooting. Okay, that worked out pretty fine. Felt a bit bad to leave those uh, two vo elemental vaults uh, unplundered, but I felt like I got away there with my life only barely with these freezing rates and the simulacrum. And that's the point where I keep saying that one pip of elemental resistance can be very dangerous to take on one of these vaults. It depends a lot on the layout, actually. There are a few layouts which are pretty doable, but right now we're very, very vulnerable. Very, very vulnerable. We're sitting on a huge amount of HP, then, which is really good, but still got to be very careful. That's a scroll of blinking. That's really good. Scroll of fox, scroll of fear. That's some options to uh, be able to escape out of dangerous situations. There's a spine frog which we can needle for a lot. 
It's almost dead once it reaches us. This is a very big fight, so I'm gonna put up the heroism at least. Don't think I need to finesse into this, but I really want to have at least the heroism to have some more armor class, have some more uh, weaponry skill here to have at least a decent uh, attack speed here on the bottom of the katana. And again, we're taking way too much damage here for my taste. So there's another blink truck, uh, spine truck, which can be terribly nasty. So we're starting to kite him and we're even faster than the frog. So let's take this in a safe manner. See, ouch, that won't work as intended. So let's switch over to the bow and keep shooting. Not risk any more melee experiments on this guy. We're not having enough uh, hit points left to try this. Okay. There's a polar bear, but easy to shoot down. Croc. Also, almost killed before it reaches us into melee. And there's another polar bear, porcupine. That's okay. Nothing too dangerous here. Another spiny frog. Let's soften it up and finish it off. Another spiny frog. Okay, this one we killed from afar. It's very, very nice. And that's layer 3 done. Off to layer 4 we go. There's Baruch. Okay, so let's start shooting. Let's see who will win this shootout. Probably gonna be Uruk. But I do know that Uruk has a very uh, limited amount of ammunition on him. And. He had no more javelins, that's why he went towards us. And there's a great sword of Holy Wrath. This is going to be replacing my flail of Holy Wrath. And for now, I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to stick to the flail because I'm leveling up some maces and flails passively. And the great sword is a pretty useless weapon if you're not uh, having some skill level in long blades, then your attacks are that slow that it's actually pretty dangerous to use it because you'll get in a lot of hits while trying to kill your enemy and yeah we are pretty vulnerable right so we don't want to take it like that it's another scroll of id so we got a potion of haste identified that's really good i mean we're already uh, running pretty sp uh, speedy here but we can always use some more speed. So there's a spiny frog. Let's take that out first, hopefully. Again, tons of damage on us from one single uh, spiny frog. So gotta be careful with those. There's a wolf and a black bear into frenzy. Again, took some damage. There's the rest of the wolf pack. I've expected something like that, but we're shooting them down in a very quick manner here. So, so let's check if there's any bow lying around. But so far it's only this enchanted short bow and I'm not too eager to uh, use that one because I feel like this won't be much better than the one I'm using right now. I mean, it could be plus four or something like that. But it'll, it would be still a short bow, and I really need some heavier uh, option, like a long bow or something like that. But we'll find that sooner or later. So let's just proceed with the stuff we have, and the autumn katana is a very good weapon here to clear through these enemies. So there's another bunch of blink frog, and we're gonna focus on shooting them down because they will keep blinking. So it's a lot easier to take them out at a distance, which we did. 
commands can regain our arrows and there's the last one of those I think there's another croc let's start shooting got it down perfect so I think it's gonna be time for our first bigger gift from Akavaru so layer 4 is done let's go for layer 5 because I'm at full piety here and so far we only got some ammunition and there we go I called it so that's a pair of embroidered gloves and that's gloves of archery even plus two very sweet that's a good item to get because it'll augment or ranged combat a lot and I like to see that so there goes a the first pack of elephants let's see how much damage we can bring up against these guys so that's taking a terrible amount of arrows here so we're gonna switch over to the katana and I think I'm gonna go into heroism here and start cutting these down because the katana does a good amount of damage Okay, so there's another croc, that's nothing too scary. So, I think these archery gloves are a very, very powerful upgrade for me because they make my ranged attacks a lot more reliable here. And that's exactly something I need reliance on these. So, did we find another recharging scroll? Sadly, no. But I got a. Uh, a uh, Wand of Confusion, that's pretty good, because I need some tool for Sonya. I can't allow her to uh, hit me with that distortion weapon, because we've seen that it does a terrible amount of damage to me. So let's take this carefully. Hydras seem to be not much of a big deal as long as we're kiting them around. And kiting is one of the biggest advantages you have as a centaur. So there's the entrance to the slime pit with the Jiva altar. One day I'm going to do some Jiva run, but not today. Jiva is a very, very funny god to play. Okay. So that's another Mamba. Let's check how this will go pretty good pretty good we only got a few hits from it not too much damage done that's okay mambas can deal out a lot of damage so careful with those they're really hard hitting snakes so that's layer six for us we're gonna magic nap this and looks like it's an interesting layout i'm not too sure what will await me here I'm not too sure which one of those is the ending. Could be one of those. So we're going to proceed at utmost caution here because this looks like a level with two vaults. I'm not too sure what's going to be in there. So there's an eight headed hydra. Very sweet because eight headed hydras yield a lot of experience. So let's check we're at 43 now and 47 after it. 4% doesn't sound too much, but at, a, at XL13 your leveling progress is a lot slower. And 4% are pretty decent for one single enemy. Especially for a single enemy which wasn't able to hurt us at all. So we got a side branches for this game, the Snake Pit and the Schultz. I'm pretty happy with those because uh, the Snake Pit is very good kiteable for me as a centaur because all the Naga are slow and that's pretty good because I'm quick. So it's gonna be really easy to avoid these guys and take uh, all fights in a manner how I wanna have it, not how they wanna have it. So it should be okay. Schultz though is a bit more dangerous. Okay, so Axis is getting to a very good level here. 
but I but I also need a very high level to reach Mindelay on this battle axe. It's gonna be level twenty. That's a lot. Still a long way to go. But I'm leveling up a, a weapon, a melee weapon too, because there are gonna be some enemies which can deflect missiles. Oh, this lindworm is really frightening me a bit. <laughs> okay, so there will be some enemies which are able to deflect missiles, and those are really hard to kill with uh, ranged attacks. So I want to have some melee option to take down these guys in a quick manner. So that's the main idea behind leveling a melee weapon on a hunter. That's one thing you got to keep in mind, that there will be some enemies which are really hard to kill with ranged attacks. It's not many, but there are a few, and if you're not equipped for those situations, you're running into a very dangerous fight. So be prepared. <laughs> It's always good to be prepared. So these gloves of archery, I really noticed the difference between before and after. I'm hitting a lot more with my puny short bow here. And as soon as we uh, pick up a better uh, bow, I think we're going to see some very, very good results here. Even though I got to level up bows again when this happens. So that's done. Another scroll will be acquirement. It's two scrolls of acquirement. Holy moly. That's really nice. I'm gonna go for a, an armor and it's crystal plate armor. Holy crap. Okay, it's even a render crystal plate armor, so let's Try it out. It's a regen and resist corrosion. Okay, so looks like we're not gonna cast spells at all in this game because I feel like this crystal plate armor is really way to go for me. I really want to bring up uh, 23 strength to wear it properly as soon as I can. So, bye bye spell casting, I guess. But that's pretty okay. Crystal plate armor is really, really good armor. So, we're kiting around these death yak over the whole level here, but I don't want to fight them up, up close. And Okavaru gifted us a centaur barding. That's one of the reasons why I went to Okavaru. It's really nice if you're a centaur. So let's check what will be. It's a centaur bot of flying. Okay, so... Looks like our situation is getting better and better. So that's a armor rating of 400. So I think I'm gonna uh, put up the ancient armor on this barding. Okay, and pop this acquirement into a weapon and Okay, so this is very, very nice. This Obsidian X might be a one-handed weapon, yet still it's very powerful. And we're already leveling Xs, so it's okay. The only downside to this is that it's a, a recursing weapon, which means every time I put it down it's gonna recurse itself. But that's not too much of a problem because in many games I end up uh, racking up a tremendous amount of remote curse scrolls and that's gonna be some good use for them and it's okay although I have a slight feeling that I'm not gonna use this axe too much and there's a longbow finally that's really nice and I'm gonna put up my enchant weapon scroll here on this and let's check. We need a skill level of 20 to get, to have this on Mindelay. So I'm going to switch back to both and drop invocations because my skills here are at a very decent um, spot. So I'm not going to need more invocations here. And there goes another 
crap load of enemies, more spiny frogs. Let's <laughs> and the hippogriff so Let's kite this and we're at 0.9 uh, delay with the bow, which is not nearly as good as the uh, short bow was. But we're starting to one-shot these. So that's really interesting. So these guys can hit for up to 26. So I can take in another swing. So I need to uh, switch the inventory slots on this bow. I just noticed that it's not A and my swapping trick didn't work out as I wanted to. All right. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of blood here along, <laughs> along the floor. So the only thing missing here will be a scroll of brand weapon for me. That's the only upgrade I need now to brand this longbow. And until I got this branded, I'm not gonna toss more uh, ancient weapon scrolls on it, even if I find more. Oh gosh, this is terrible. Mm. Let's fear and retreat for now. Didn't want to pop teleportation because I don't have more, uh, that many teleportation scrolls at my disposal, so gotta use them sparingly there lot more uh, dangerous situations than these. So. Our magic resistance is still very bad. That's why I'm really scared of any basilisk crossing our way. So there's a mocassin. Gonna slice it apart. Okay, so there's this area and looks like we're gonna be entering these vaults now and now I remember how this worked uh, this room will contain a dragon as far as I remember since I'm not having fire resistance I'm gonna uh, avoid this and there's a hornet so I'm immediately gonna switch over into a might potion and this is really ugly. We're still mighted, so it's okay. Let's go into heroism and finesse. Because this fight is really, really brutal. Okay. Hornets and a Torpo Snail together are a very uh, sick combination. So let's go into heroism again to this Hornet. There's more hornets, that's really uncomfortable. I'm gonna cure once and zap this with the one of lightning. Hopefully gonna hit, nope, that didn't work out. And yeah, okay. So it's the swampy ending. And this emperor leech, no, tyrant leech, is draining our hit points, healing itself up. So we're going to take this at a distance. So this is very, very spooky in my opinion. Because there are a lot of enemies inside there which are quicker than me. Speaking of the hornets. So we're going to take this path now and see what's inside here. Okay, so there's a basilisk among these. I really want to take down this basilisk first because it still has a 35% of petrifying us, which is a bit too much for my taste. Okay, we got it down, so the rest of this will be pretty easy. Again, let's kite back and start shooting. And we ran into a basilisk, so it petrified us. I'm gonna fear. And we got petrified, and the petrification went down. So let's focus this death yak for now and hope the basilisk will stay away for now. We're still firing this longbow at a pretty slow pace here. Okay, so that's done. Pretty dangerous layer 6 layout here so far. 
seem a lot of easier layer layouts because the combination of basilisks and death yak is a very uh, spicy combination. You don't want to get petrified beside something like a death yak or a hydra or an elephant. There's a lot of uh, options which can hurt you a lot if you're standing beside some dream, dream sheep. So we're gonna toss our last scroll of fear here, finish off the uh, elephant first, go for the sheep next. Because once the sheep are down, the hydra is not much of a hassle here. So I've used all of my uh, fear scrolls down here, but it's pretty okay. Chances are I'm gonna find more of them. And in my opinion, the, the lair is one of the best areas to use fear scrolls due to the very low magic resistance of the inhabitants of this area. So there's another hornet and we're gonna go straight into hero on this and gonna chop down the ice drake here because their freeze will slow us and we don't want to get slowed while there's a death yak hanging around so that's done and carefully going forward here because chances are there will be a lot more dangerous baddies around here as we get closer to the end of this area. So there's another dream sheep. Let's try to break the line of sight. And there's a lindworm. Okay, we got this with two shots from a bow. It's very good. That's why I'm so happy I found a longbow. These longbows have very, very good uh, base damage compared with a shortbow. So. We can kill stuff with that. The base damage of a longbow is high enough for uh, completing the game. It's 15. That's enough base damage to finish the game with it. But again, we're facing a hornet. And this is a very, very sticky situation. Okay. So I went again on the heroism because I wanted to uh, kill off the hornet as quick as possible because there's always a chance that hornets will either slow or paralyze you, even if you're poison resistant. And getting paralyzed beside a Hydra, that's something. That's something, my friends. Okay, so we got another Phantom Mirror. That's really nice to have. I like Phantom Mirrors. The best thing about Phantom Mirrors is that they stack. Okay, so this fight is gonna be taken in this corner on the heroism. And let's slice apart this yak. It's okay. So there's another hornet. And I keep using my heroism on these because they have a decent evasion rating and I really want to end this fight as quick as I can. So there's another torpus name. Some mean combinations of enemies. Torpus snails, hornets, and uh, Tyrant Leeches, quite a spicy combination of enemies here. But so far we're dealing pretty well, but we're out of heal wounds potions, which is scaring me a little. So there we go, Blink Frog. Let's go into Heroism. Okay, killing these pretty easily with the Autumn Katana here. So if you're an upper Baru follower, really uh, use this heroism thing as much as you think you need to. So there's a unique uh, rendered falchion, but you know what guys, I'm not gonna use this. So I do have a potion of resistance on me, which means I can open this door without uh, being too afraid of getting blown up here. So it's an ice dragon that's pretty nice, actually. So we're shooting at 0.4 speed with the finesse, and that's pretty good because the ice blasts from this dragon hurt a bit, 
but not too much. So we're just taking this fight at a distance. We've lost one pip of uh, piety with Okobaru for this finesse, but I think it was well worth it. So let's go for the dungeon. If you hit the dollar sign on this, you're gonna be heading to the deepest spot you've seen so far. And there's an alligator, which is an out of depth monster. It's the big brother of the crocodile. But we're we got in a few good hits on him and he was no big deal at all. So there's another spiny frog, which we didn't hit good. Okay. Another one. Let's check if we can do it better this time. Yes we can. Okay, so this is a very uh, uncomfortable staircase. So, can we fire at this? No. Actually, we can't. That's an interesting layout, and it's guarding a scroll of requirement. Oh boy, that's really nasty. Okay, so there's a few orcs. I'm not too afraid of these anymore. Scorpion, that's also not much of a big deal here. And there goes Sonya. So this time we're gonna try to confuse her, that's a very decent chance. And then we're gonna try to shoot her. There we go. And that's a unique centaur barding, which is way worse than the one we're already wearing. It's only resist negative energy on it. That's really not enough to swap out the flying part here. Because I really do like to have flying, especially since we're facing a run where we got to do shoals. So that's really cool to have. So I'm going to use one of my liquidification potions on this B pack because that's one of the best uses of those and they started to pile up. So might as well use them instead of hoarding them. So there are a few centaurs. Let's show them who's the boss centaur here. And shoot them. So there's a new amulet. And since the harm is out of the game, we can safely try this out. And it's Guardian Spirit. I think I'm going to use that because it's a layer of extra HP for me. And since I'm carrying around this crystal plate armor, which I really want to use at some point, uh, we can definitely uh, use this. So there's an invisible enemy, and this is one of the situations where I really want to pick up this obsidian axe and just kill stuff. Okay, so I didn't know this axe could actually summon demons for me. That's really interesting. Okay, interesting, interesting. So let's remove the curse here and remove this axe. Did, it, did its job. So there goes a ring. Let's check. It's a ring of intelligence. That's nothing I want to uh, stick to here. You feel stupid. Okay, then I'm stupid. Okay, game. So let's call this an episode for now. We dealt with the complete lair. We dealt with Sonya, which was a big threat back then on the last run. And considering how my uh, equipment options here went on this run, I feel like stuff is getting a bit more manageable here. Yet still, we're lacking fire resistance completely. We're lacking a reliable source of sea invisible. We also well, we got resist corrosion on the crystal plate armor, yet still we're also lacking uh, magic resistance, which is really, really scary when we're delving deeper here. But let's check. There's no item with MR plus in the game. There's some rune plate armor lying around. Okay, so that's something I've overlooked. Let's pick this up and see what will it, what will it be. And that's the 
fire resistance we were lacking. Okay, so since we're having uh, quite a way ahead of us until we get the strength to, for the crystal plate armor, I think it's a good thing to take for now. Uh, let's check the other branded items we've found so far, but there's nothing I really want to have. Okay, so let's check the artifacts we found so far. There's only the centaur barding and the falchion. That's also nothing we have overlooked. And yeah, that's the end for part two of the centaur hunter walkthrough, playthrough, tutorial, whatever, entertainment, call it however you like. I'm happy you joined me for this video and thanks for watching and see you guys soon on the next episode. Bye bye.